Construction offers a very unique reward in the upgrading of your player own house. Getting higher levels allows you to have better and more useful upgrades slash buildings inside of your house. But with all these potential rooms and things to build inside of it, people ask themselves quite frequently, what should I be building? Where should I be building it? How should my house look? You've probably asked yourself this once or twice. Well, in this video, we're gonna be covering all of these topics as well as talking about an efficient house layout. So stick around because we're gonna build your player own house knowledge from the ground up. Before I get into discussing the different types of rooms, I just wanted to say that if you're looking for a CC to hang out in, you can join mine, which is just my name. We have a pretty nice group of people in there and we do weekly skilling competitions to help motivate yourself, as well as have a good amount of people who like to PVM. Also, if you already know about the different types of things and the different rooms to build inside of your house, there will be timestamps in the description so you can just skip ahead to whatever you want to you know, see in the video. So go ahead and check those out. All right, let's talk construction. Let's start off by discussing the different rooms that serve some kind of purpose that you might consider some interest in building. Starting off with the workshop at level 15 construction. Initially, this room does not see much use, but it offers access to a couple buildings such as the crafting table and the armor stand. The crafting table is required for a quest in order to create a clockwork suit, but it can also be used to create clockworks, which are a necessary component of birdhouses. This is kind of a niche moneymaker, but that's not what this video is about. The main component of this room is the armor stand at level 55 construction, which will allow you to repair your Barrows gear. The difference between repairing this way and using something like Bob and Lumbridge is that the cost of the repair actually scales with your smithing level, so the higher level smithing that you have, the lower the cost to repair it will be, which can save you money in the long run. The bedroom, which you unlock at level 20 construction. Until you have level 99 construction, or 200 mil for those of you that, you know, gluttons for punishment over here, Having two of these is necessary in your house because you will need a house of servant, which is needed in order to train construction at high rates everyone preaches about the skill. But there is one more use to these rooms instead of just building the bed and calling it quits. In the corner of the room there is a clock space, and thanks to an update back in 2017, you can now build a servant's money bag at level 58 construction in the spot. This bag will hold up to 3 million GP and will automatically pay the servant when you are using them to train construction allowing you to free up an inventory spot and not have to bring money in your inventory in order to train. So overall, you want to have one of these constructed until you've reached your end goal of construction. Then you'll want to remove it because there's no purpose after that. The quest hall at level 35 construction. This room usually has one use at level 47 construction, and that's the ability to have a mounted glory in your house. What this will do is it will allow you to have access to unlimited glory charges in your house, and until you can build an ornate jewelry box, this is the only way to utilize unlimited jewelry charges on a glory. It's also worth mentioning you can mount a mythical cape in here if you need to use that teleport a lot, but generally people find more uses for the glory teleports because it generally puts you closer to a bank. The mounted mythical capes offer a niche, cheap way of training construction, but that's generally not used for main accounts, that's more used for Iron Man accounts, and this video isn't about con training construction, so we're just gonna scooch on past that one. For all you pet hunters out there, you'll be interested in the menagerie. This room is used to store all of your pets and even feed them if they get hungry, which is like only cats, but whatever. There are two variations of this room, an indoor and an outdoor version. You can only build one of these rooms, but at no cost you can switch them between being an indoor or outdoor menagerie. A couple features here would be the pet house, which is ne necessary if you want to store any of your pets in this room instead of your bank. You can also build a pet list in this room, which is fun for all you completionists out there who are hunting all the pets. And this is basically just a way in game for you to track your pet progression. At level 45 construction, you can build a chapel, which is one of the first really useful rooms you get to build. You get to build an altar in here, which will allow you to recharge your prayer points instead of having to find an altar in the outdoor world or dying. There is also a lamp hotspot in this room, which if you want to be training prayer in these rooms with a gilded altar, you will need to build at least incense burners at level 61 construction. An important note here is that building in one hotspot will build both hotspots. At level 75, you gain the ability to upgrade your altar into a gilded altar, which is what most people will use to train their prayer for. However, if you are not using runners to run bones from you, it's generally not recommended to do in your own house because of you constantly having to relight the burners. But like I said, this is not a training guide, so I won't go too much detail into that. Just know that any of these altars will allow you to recharge your prayer points. You gain access to the portal room at level 50 construction, which will allow you to create teleport portals to a number of different locations, which I will have a link to in the description. You will need to have the runes to cast a spell 100 times in order to build the location as well as the magic level needed to cast a spell, and you can use boosts to reach the mag magic levels necessary. You can only have three portals in a room, so most players will have multiple portal rooms if they need different locations. This gets outclassed in later levels, but it's handy to have at lower construction levels, definitely. 
65 Construction gives us access to the superior garden. This contains two important hotspots, the natural teleport and the pool. The natural teleport can either be a spirit tree, a wildy obelisk, a fairy ring, or a spiritual fairy tree at level 75, 80, 85, and 95 construction respectively, needing 83 farming as well for the spirit trees to be planted. These are not built with saws, so you cannot use the crystal saw plus three boost when building these. You can still use things like spicy stews to boost up five levels. The pool hotspot can eventually heal everything you have and restore everything you have to full at level 90 construction. So it is incredibly useful, but even the lower levels of restoring your special attack is useful as there are not many places to do this in the game that will allow you to perform the action. It is to note that you will need to upgrade these pools when building them, so you have to build at least one before building the other. So if you're going to eventually build the ornate one, you can't just straight up build the ornate pool. You have to build all of the existing layers below it and upgrade it every time. 72 construction allows us to build a portal nexus room, which is essentially an upgraded portal room, but allows us to hang two new amulets on the wall, the Xerix talisman and the dig site pendant at 72 and 82 construction respectively. Both of these will have unlimited teleports, similar to what we had with the Amulet of Glory at level 47 construction. The main focal point of this room is the Portal Nexus, which has three upgrades and will give you 4, 8, and 18 different teleport locations at each corresponding upgrade. The difference between this and the Portal Room is that the Nexus will have all these teleports in a centralized location and not force you to run to different corners of the room to use the Portal. You also will need to have a thousand casts of the spell to enable the teleport location, which is 10 times more than is needed for the portal room. So it is notably more expensive for the Nexus, but it is much more convenient here. Finally, the achievement gallery at level 80 construction, one of the most useful rooms in the game. It offers access to an altar to allow you to change your spell book, which pre-magic cape is one of the few convenient ways to change your spell books in the game. It also offers the jewelry box, which gives you unlimited teleports to six different pieces of jewelry at the highest upgrade. And you can also mount a cape in this room to have access to that cape's teleport inside your house. You can only build one altar. You can only build an altar of one type at level 80 construction, but at level 90, you can upgrade it to an occult altar, which will allow the transition between all the different spell books in the game. The jewelry box can be initially built at level 81 construction, but will only have rings of dueling and games of game teleports and on it. At level 91, you can build the ornate box, which will have duelings, games, combats, skills, glories, and wealth teleports on it, which is one of the most useful hotspots in the game in my opinion. The cape hanger will allow you to display one of your skill capes or max capes, and if that cape has a teleport on it, you can use that teleport by clicking on the cape itself. So a lot of people will, if they don't have a max cape, they will have a construction cape in their inventory, teleport to their house, recharge everything with the ornate pool, then go use the crafting cape that they have mounted, and then there they go. They don't have to use an extra inventory spot for the crafting cape. So that's a use for the actual mounting of a cape. So now we know all the different types of rooms we can build. Let's talk about the locations of these rooms. The important thing to remember here is that you need to keep the three most used rooms in the north, west, and south rooms. These rooms are the closest to your portal, making it the easiest room for you to make to in the shortest amount of time. Then from that point, add in the rooms in the order of closeness to the portal in terms of how useful it is. And then here's an example of what I have in my house layout for you guys. So here's a look at my house. It is very minimal, obviously, because I'm max, so I don't need to train construction anymore. At least at this point in time, I don't want to train construction. I have this room up here, which is a, I believe it's a quest room or a skills. It's one of the rooms where you can mount ahead. This just has a lot of sentimental value for me. This was a painful grind to get the KQ head, so I wanted to keep it. But as you see, like the way that I have the house laid out is my three most useful rooms are in the north, west, and south, because these are the easiest rooms for me to get to, depending on where you spawn in. So based on the way my house is right now, I will always spawn right here. So it is easy for me to get here. And then I've done this. It is like one or two tiles difference between either running from here to here versus running from here to here. It's like one or two tile difference, so it doesn't really matter all that much if you want super max efficiency, but the rooms that you wanna be using the most are, should be your north, west, and south because it's the easiest ones for you to get to. So like, for example, most people will end up putting their superior garden here because it makes it very easy to get to the, the pool before you're going to either your jewelry box, your altar, your portals, or your spiritual fairy tree or your obelisk or whatever. They usually put the portal here or the pool here because you will pretty much always use it every time you enter the room or every time you enter the house. Then from there, you want to expand into whatever you want. So like the menagerie over here just to store pets. I obviously don't have any in there for whatever reason, but I keep it there. 
and then you've got whatever other extraneous rooms you want i have my workshop over there to go repair my barrows gear the other thing i could do would be to have another superior garden for a wilderness obelisk but those are kind of expensive so i don't really i don't really find a need for it um other rooms that i could build i don't really see a whole lot of use for it um obviously i could upgrade my achievement gallery to put like a cape rack in there and the display and all that but this is a very basic look when you have a max house i'll go ahead and show you guys like what the actual viewer looks like so right now it is a three by three, I believe. I don't think I have it set up as a four by four. I have it set up as a three by three right now, but you could expand this to being basically another, you fill in these two, so that's two, add in another eight rooms. You could essentially just add in another 10 rooms over what I have. So there's plenty of things for you to have. There's plenty of room for you to do a bunch of different rooms if you really want to, but in actuality, this is all I really need in my house is these four rooms right here. So as long as I have those, I'm pretty much okay. That is an example of what my house looks like. You can expand this obviously if you want, but you want to make sure that is it at maximum four by four, making it a total of 16 rooms. And the reason that this is, is that you're trying to build an efficient house and you want the house to load as quick as possible. The way you do that is by reducing the amount of blackness or green that appears when you open up your house like editor basically. In order to achieve this, this house can be no larger than 4x4. Having it smaller than 4x4 does not decrease load time as the fastest load time known at the point of recording is 2 ticks. Also, a side note here is that if you have a dungeon and upstairs, or a dungeon or upstairs, you will, need, you will have a slower load time. The house needs to be one story in order to have that 2 tick load time. If you're having difficulty trying to hit that 2 tick lo load time, one hint or one helpful thing to know is try to move your house to like the southeastern corner or the southwestern corner or just any corner in general to help reduce the amount of load time in general. Keep in mind as well, this doesn't mean you can have 16 rooms in a line and it'll load just as fast as having 4x4. Four four. It has to be maintained in those dimensions, so 4 wide by 4 tall in order to decrease the load time. And that's going to do it for today's video, guys, on how to build an efficient POH, as well as what rooms you should have in an efficient POH. I hope this, you found some information in this guide to be useful. Hopefully you can use some of these tips to make your house more efficient so you can load it faster so you're not sitting at the screen looking there for like five seconds so you can get in and get out. If you guys did enjoy the video, go ahead and give it a like. If you want to see more content from the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Links to all my socials are going to be on, down in the description, things like my Twitch, my Twitter, links to my Discord, things like that. So if you guys want to check out or hang out with me or whatever, all that stuff's in the description. Have a great morning, afternoon, evening, night, whatever time of day it is, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.